Did I start this YouTube channel just so I can complain about my very niche issues or things that I want to talk about? Yeah, I did. And originally I was planning on starting it with a completely different essay. However, that one took way too long to edit and I started to lose steam. So I decided to go with a more shorter video idea. <laughs> So here it is. If you guys enjoy this, then I will release that other one. So let, let's, let's just see where this goes. I started writing this essay on a different topic that I also wanted to mention, but it kept crossing over with this one. The original topic was the who is more oppressed debate and why it shouldn't matter. However, I constantly ended up defending sapphic representation in the media. Defending sapphic representation in the media, you may scoff. Why do they need defending to get the most representation? Well, this is why. It is not uncommon to find the queer community complaining about their representation in the media, specifically complaining about the representation of their specific identity in the media. It is also not uncommon to find others in the queer community in the reply speaking of their own identities portrayal in the media. However, it is not always a productive comment and sometimes feels like more of an attack. It's like how in school, when someone will innocently blurt, sorry, I only slept for six hours last night, and then someone interjects, yeah, well I only slept for five hours last night. It's a small competition of who had it worse when it wasn't a competition to begin with. This is what typically happens in conversations about the LGBTQ representation in the media, specifically the mainstream media. I stumbled upon this topic recently when I found a tweet from the user at OEC Dyke. This tweet reads, WLW have so much representation. Below are three pictures, Ellen DeGeneres, the two leads in Blue Zorm's color, and Pornhub. It does not take much scrolling to find people pointing fingers at the amount of oppression points MLM have compared to WW in the media. And then I quickly found one of my inspirations for making this video, a tweet that reads, so you're ignoring She-Ra, Adventure Time, Steven Universe, Legend of Korra, One Day at a Time, Orange the New Black, the Handmaid's Tale, The Fosters, Book and Line 9, Buffy, Harley Quinn, and Poison Ivy? Is it just me, or are lesbians more palatable and represented than MLM? Another user responds to this with, There's no way lesbians are more represented than MLM. Both lack representation, but MLM is way more common than WOW. The previous user responds, In my experience, I've seen far more WOW rep, taking into account that a lot of MLM couples are jokes and not taken seriously. In short, lesbian relationships are easier to market because it shows no danger of disrupting patriarchal society unlike MLM do. Before anything, I would like to say that WOW and MLM characters in the 2010s are nearly equal. WOW standing at 38% of LGBT representation and MLM standing at 39%. Second of all, lesbians are not easier to market because they show no danger of disrupting the patriarchal society. Patriarchy is a social system in which men hold primary power and dominate in roles of political leadership, moral authority, social privilege, and control of property. Lesbian relationships exclude men entirely. There's no man to be the head of the household. There's no man to be the breadwinner. There's no man to hold more authority. Wouldn't excluding men entirely be disrupting the patriarchy, thus disrupting a patriarchal society? I would speak more about this topic, but I would get off track. When it comes to lack of representation, we all have different perspectives depending on the type of media we consume. For example, if someone were to mention how gay men are fetishized in anime and need more realistic representation, then I would have to agree. In anime, gay men are definitely more fetishized. 
They are so fetishized that there is a word for women who obsess over gay men, call them their little uwu babies, and talk about how much they're sinning when thinking of two men holding hands. However, if someone mentions the lack of proper and sincere Savic representation in dramatic television series, I would also have to agree. If there is good representation, it is in a show that does not succeed in any other category, it would not have been enjoyable if there were no Savic characters. It is very difficult to say a blanket statement for the lack of representation of WW or MLM in all of the media, because if we want to play the lack of representation game, we should advocate for more transgender representation, more intersex representation, more sexual representation, more BIPOC queer representation, and definitely more disabled queer representation. The only explicitly disabled queer representation I could think of off the top of my head was Special, a show about a gay man with cerebral palsy, and Love on a Spectrum, a reality dating show about people on the autism spectrum finding love, which in one episode includes two bisexual women. I may have spent too much of my time researching LGBTQ plus representation in the media, despite the fact that GLAD had some statistics and research, I wanted to do my own. After browsing a list of LGBTQ plus representation in the media on Wikipedia, I compiled them all into categories. Lesbian, gay, bisexual slash pansexual, transgender slash gender nonconforming, asexual, intersex, queer woman, and queer men. Some of the characters were listed as lesbian or bisexual or gay or bisexual, so I put those who did not have an explicit label in the queer woman or queer men category. Out of the 1,807 LGBTQ plus characters accounted for in the 2010s, these were the statistics. 22.4% lesbian, 21.4% gay, 15.8% bisexual slash pansexual, 5.9% transgender slash gender nonconforming, 0.39% asexual, 0.22% intersex, 15.8% queer woman, and 17.9% queer men. These were pulled from shows and films from all around the world. If I added live action films, that probably would have made more of a difference, but doing so would have taken over a week of researching. Perhaps when I have more time, I'll be able to complete the film portion, but until then, this is the research that I will work with. Then, I realized how disproportionate the WOW to MLM ratio in anime series in the 2010s were. There were 156 lesbians and 71 gay men. When the LGBTQ plus community talks about the representation in the media, they typically refer to Western media. So, to get a better grasp of the representation that we look at, I decided to go through the list again and separate the Japanese anime series and the Western anime series. This is where I received results that made more sense. In the Japanese anime series, there was a disproportionate amount of lesbians compared to all the other identities. Lesbians made up 51% of the LGBTQ plus representation in Japanese anime series in the 2010s. However, in the Western anime series, it was more balanced. 30.7% of the LGBTQ plus representation were lesbians and 30% were gay men. Then, I decided to take it a step further. I did not previously separate the WW bisexuals from the MLM bisexuals, and those definitely played roles in changing the representation dynamics. After all, Marceline and Bubblegum are both canonically bisexual, yet they are one of the most popular WW couples in the media. Same with Korra and Asami. I also separated WW and MLM into two groups, main characters and minor characters. There is a massive difference between having a main character be LGBTQ+, and there being two characters ambiguously of the same gender holding hands in the background for a frame. I also decided to add the LGBTQ plus characters from the 2020 Western anime series because of how important Kippo, The Hollow, and The Owl House are. I collected the data and found surprising statistics. The WW and MLM ratio, both for main characters and minor characters, were relatively balanced. Actually, they were entirely balanced. 
there are 24 WOW main characters and 42 WOW minor characters. And there are 24 MLM main characters and 42 MLM minor characters. So why does the representation feel so unbalanced? Out of the 16 shows that showcase WOW main characters, 9 are popular and 11 are for children. Out of the 16 shows that showcase MLM main characters, 8 are popular and 4 are for children. I mentioned how many shows are for children because having LGBTQ plus characters in shows for children are very beneficial to the widespread acceptance of the LGBTQ plus community amongst children. However, it is difficult to tell who is in the LGBTQ plus community in children's shows with subtle hints and clues scattered around. Very few characters in these shows, even in the late 2010s and the present, have explicitly stated their sexuality. Therefore, seeing two characters of the same gender kiss on screen is one way of the characters to show that they're queer. On screen queer kisses also normalize queer couples holding hands and kissing in public. 8 out of 16 shows with WW main characters show on screen kisses. Korra and Asami's kiss was censored, but I still chose to count it, and also Luna and Sam's kiss from The Loud House was only a kiss on the cheek, but I again still chose to count it. However, only 5 of the 16 shows with main MLM characters show on screen kisses. Alan Gregory is not a popular show, and reviews state that it's not the best representation, and Benson and Troy's kiss was only on the cheek, but I still chose to count both of those. The only two MLM kisses that compare to the WW kisses were Calder and Wind from Young Justice, and Shiro and Curtis from Voltron. I don't really want to count Shiro and Curtis because Curtis was a background character, they had no chemistry, and the creators of Voltron somehow managed to queerbait an actual gay character. But they kissed on screen, so I had to count it. Only Calder and Wynn's kiss felt as rewarding as the popular WW kisses because of the buildup and anticipation. All of the WW kisses felt rewarding and heartwarming. Why is that? And why are there so many more WW kisses in the mainstream media and children's cartoons than MLM kisses? WW kisses are more plentiful for the same reason why girls being touchy and kissing other girls is seen as a friend thing. In Western society, women are seen as soft, delicate, caring, emotional, and sometimes flirtatious. It is socially acceptable for women to hold hands with, hug, or cuddle other women, talk about their feelings with other women, and show their weaknesses. People do the same in romantic relationships. If the show wanted to do the bare minimum, all they would do is write two girls who are friends, have them kiss, and they're seen as progressive. However, it is not socially acceptable for men to do the same with their friends. In Western society, men are seen as competitive, assertive, strong, and independent. To toxic masculinity is a very real issue. Men are expected to be detached from their emotions. If men are seen simply talking about their emotions with other men, they're seen as feminine and weak. Having feminine men in the media is one hurdle. Having more explicitly gay men is another altogether. Due to all of that, sapphics would be easier to censor in countries that don't allow queerness in their media. Even if they were clearly girlfriends, all they would have to do is cut out the kisses and they would simply be seen as very close friends. However, if there was a gay couple, they would have to censor far more. They have to cut out their development when they're emotional with each other, when they hug, or when they're weak around each other. That is why sapphics are more marketable in cartoons. It's very important in the LGBTQ community that we listen to each other and don't compare oppression points. Listen to lesbians, listen to gay men, listen to bisexuals, listen to trans folk, listen to asexuals, listen to the BIPOC queer community, listen to the disabled queer community. Every identity portrayed in the media has ways to go. This is only the beginning. 
Thank you so much for watching this video and taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk about the niche things I like to talk about. And I'm not sure how niche this actually is, but whatever, this is my opinion on it. If you have a different opinion and you want to discuss in the comments, you can. Um, if you want to like this video, then you can like this video. And if you want to subscribe, subscribe, that, that'd be, that'd be kind of nice. That'd be a kind of nice thing. Um, I don't know when the next video will be out. I'm hoping maybe one to two weeks. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And I hope that you all have a good day or night or evening or wherever you are. Thanks. Bye.